My name is Vincent Amani and I'm Head of Environmental Policy and Compliance with Transport Infrastructure Ireland. My team and I have the responsibility for the integration of all environmental measures into the planning, construction and operation of na major national road projects and light rail projects in Ireland. Over the past 30 years, I've worked in the environmental area. I've worked for infrastructure development and the industrial sector. And during that time, I've developed policies and programs related to climate change, sustainability, waste, air and noise issues. Why did I become interested in CEDAR activities? Well, mainly for three reasons. First of all, Ireland was developing a major national road network in the early noughties and I wanted to see how other CEDAR member states addressed the environmental issues that we were encountering during our work. Secondly, I wanted to participate in the working groups and contribute to the discussion in addressing various environmental issues. Finally, I felt that the combined effort of all member states working together would bring greater benefits to CEDAR NRAs across Europe. The first working group I got involved with was that with the Noise Working Group and they commenced their activities in 2006. Now, there was subsequent working groups in 2010 and 2014, but during all of that time, we developed a number of reports addressing important areas such as environmental noise barriers, noise reducing pavements, cost benefit analysis on the assessment of the integration of noise mitigate measures into major roads, and of course, strategic noise mappings. Currently, I'm involved in two CEDAR transnational research programme. The first is the 2015 Climate Change Programme, which has three projects known as Watch, Detector and Modbear. The second programme I'm involved in is the 2016 Biodiversity Research Programme. And currently, we have one project in that program, and this project is known as Control and Roads, where the researchers are looking at the impact of invasive plant species on major roads across Europe. I feel this is an area that will present a great challenge to NRAs across Europe going into the future. Also, I would like to tell you about the activities of the Cedar Environment Working Group and they commenced their activities in 2017. We're all very aware that environmental issues still present the greatest challenges to the development and maintenance of major roads across Europe. These challenges are not new but currently we have the issues revolving around the transposition of the 2014 EIA directive. Noise still presents a problem. We have the protection of wildlife and habitats under the birds and habitat regulations. And we're constantly facing the challenge of making our network more resilient to the impact of climate change. Take for example the impact of road traffic noise across Europe. Road traffic noise and the impact it has on our neighbours continues to present many challenges and I feel that these challenges will only become greater as more information becomes available about the impact various noise sources can have on human health. When developing a transport infrastructure the question we need to ask ourselves, what legacy do we want to pass on to the next generation? Do we want to be perceived as visionaries? Or is it a situation that the solutions that we put in place today only become problems for future generations? Coming back to the activities of the Cedar Environment Working Group. Currently, we have 12 CEDAR members involved in this particular working group. 
and we are currently looking at issues around the transposition of the EIA Directive, the new EU Noise Prediction Methodology known as Canossus, and probably most importantly is how can we integrate sustainability into future planning of transport infrastructure. Now, what do we hope to achieve from this? Well, from the point of view of the EIA Directive, it would be great to get an insight into how the EIA process actually works in each of the Member States. And what lessons can we learn from each other on the transposition of the 2014 Directive? Secondly, with regards to the Conossus methodology, this is a methodology that all Member States will have to use in the next round of strategic noise mapping in 2022. Therefore, it would really be beneficial to each Member State to learn the lessons and experiences of each Member State as we start to implement that particular methodology. And finally, what we'd really like to see is how could CEDA Member States integrate sustainability into the decision making for the planning of future transport infrastructure.